There's 17 million people in the LA area. Mm -hmm. There's enough people for every trainer. I know you, you guys all want to become trainers. There's enough people. There, are, there are enough people for you. The key is, can I do right with the people I'm working with? Can I give them 100% in my workout every single time? Okay, so if you go on Google right now and you type in top celebrity trainer, a name's gonna come up. The guy sitting next to him, his name is Gunnar Peterson, who, let me just kind of say a list of some of the people you train. Brady, mm -hmm. Kardashian, Stallone, Affleck, let me do it, Ben Affleck, you got a list of them that you've got. I'm in the right zip code, look where I am. I have great parking, I'm in the right zip code. I'm centrally located, if you're in Brentwood or West Hollywood or downtown, you're probably cruising through this point of town or else you live here. And, and she said, she said, just park in our building. And Mario's like, Pat, I think he said over there, I said, no, no, in Beverly Hills to have parking in the building, it's this everything. is not a, you know, it's, it's, it's everything. And you're in a prime, prime location here. Yep. So anyways, and on top of that, by the way, the Lakers just hired him as the head strength coach. We got that. You proud of me or what? Head uh, strength coach. That was excellent work. Uh, and so how does a guy like you go from being who you are, where pretty much your entire family is going to do, how do you go from there to not being who you are today? Uh, I didn't change. I, I stayed, I mean, in terms of who I am, I know who I am because of my family. We're, we're tight. I would never have attitude or ego about any of that. And when the job came up, I didn't have to, uh, I'm able to work it where I can still do what I need to do at my own facility as well as do the work at the Lakers. So I split my days. I get here at 4.30, 4.45 sometimes, and uh, I'm here till 8.00. Then I go down to the Lakers, and I'm there till one, and then I'm back here till six, then I'm home. Tim Grover trained Kobe, and he trained MJ, you know, and Wade, he was with MJ for 15 years, so he was mainly he NBA. Also, he also ran Hoops the Gym, so he did this straddle that I did, and I've tell a number of trainers who want to jump, who want to cross that fence, I say, look, if I, if I can do it, anybody can do it, but just know that it's two different jobs, and I'm talking about trainer and gym owner. That's two very different jobs. You can be a phenomenal That's trainer so and fail miserably as a gym owner, whereas you can be a terrific gym owner, but when it comes to training people, you bomb. In our world, in the business world, I would say being somebody that's great in sales or maybe being a CEO, yes. running a company, night yes. and day, just because you're great in sales, that's right. you can run a company. Somebody can run the numbers and tell you what you need to bump up in your business, but if you put them face to face with a customer, you lose all your business. So yeah. this is one of the questions I ask him, I'm gonna ask you as well. I'm curious to know what you're gonna say. For you, I mean, literally, Kendall Jenner just walked out, you just got done with her. And so you got everybody comes here. These are people that are, you know, 98 million followers on Instagram. Everyone knows me. Paparazzi. I have money. I uh, have no, no. no paparazzi in here. Not in here. Paparazzi proof. I got the gate. That's right. You save them with that. But, but they have a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. How do you get me to push me? to continue wanting to develop my body to the next level. How does that relationship work out? Is there a real tough conversation that takes place at some point? It's not, a, it's not about berating you or embarrassing you or shaming you or insulting you. I don't need to do that. Uh, I don't sell fitness to anybody. I don't push fitness. I don't go out and put you know, flyers or my business card under people's windshield wipers at the mall. I'm, the people are coming because it's something they want. By the time they get here, the motivation's already kicked in. They're self-motivated. These are people who, if you look at their careers, they're self-motivated. Nobody has to nudge those people and go, time to get up, gotta go to work today. They're up, they're out there. They've probably done more before work than most people will do at work. Your clientele, these are pros. These are people that really, really wanna do this. Now, high let's level, to high achieving, hyperactive. one percent Correct, and I, and, I, and I love those people. That's great. And they may not even know, they fire me up. They're fired up, so they want to work out. They're fired up to train with somebody who's passionate about the training, but I'm fired up because of who they are and the fact that they found a way to actively prioritize this and fit this into their already jam-packed day. I love people like this. Don't tell me you don't have time. But the people that are watching this, go back to you when you were just getting started. You're somebody, but you're not yet maybe at this level. When you first started with names, was it automatically A-list names you were training from day one or no? I mean, to me, that's funny when they list them as A-list, B-list. To me, everybody who comes here is an A-lister. Whether it's uh, an attorney, whether it's a, a doctor, or it's just a, a guy who inherited money and who's just enjoying his life, but he wants to stay in shape. You treat everybody like they're an A-lister. I don't have, you know, it's like somebody said to me once, you have to charge celebrities differently, and I, I think that's I think that's wrong. I think that's 
I think that's wrong. You can't, if I ran a restaurant and I say, hey, you want the steak, it's $26. And I go, oh, wait a minute, wait, you're on a TV show? Oh, the steak's $42. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. So, yeah. and, and if you're providing a service, you're charging for your time. Just wait, like- no, That's very common in your world though. I, I find it wrong. It's great for other people, that's not my way. So what's been the biggest evolution from you know, Gunnar Peterson 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 to today. So I started um, in home, going to people's homes. But I was driving all over the place and you can't obviously maximize your time and, and the workouts aren't as effective. Even if the person has a gym, it's not gonna be uh, as dialed as the gym I put together. This is for how long? How long were you doing it? So it was two years uh, in home, eight years in a gym. And then I started my own gym and I did uh, nine years there, 17, 18, 19, yeah, when I've been here, 10 years. I was killing over there hours wise, just back to back to back, anywhere from 48, 50 to 65 one-on-one -on -one hours a week, plus spinning classes, as much as I could do. I took all comers, whatever, let's go. I was tireless, you know? And then you get married, you have kids, and, and your priorities have to, or should shift, in my opinion. And you dial it back, and I see seven, eight, nine people a day. I do a lot of prep. Uh, I print out workouts for every single person every single day. Uh, I do the prep the night before, I sit with my kids. Whichever kid is doing the most homework, I'll probably sit with that kid and I'll do my homework while they do their homework. And I try to infuse a little bit of levity in the workout. I'm not in LA, I can't afford you. I am in LA, but I can't afford you. I'm in Austin, I'm in Miami, I'm in Chicago. I'm in a city, how do I know how to hire and interview a trainer to say, this is who will be my trainer? So I would go through one of the governing bodies and they have, um, you know, they have a, like a, it's mapped out where their members are. So the National Strength and Conditioning Association, um, NASM, ACSM, ACE, and you can reach out to them. I'm sure you could do it on the website and just say, I'm looking for a trainer in this area. But after that, it's not unlike dating in that you may have to kiss a couple frogs. You know, you, you're going to have to Same test drive because it might be a great person that uh, has a ton of knowledge and is really um, qualified at communicating the knowledge. But then you speak to him and you're like, I don't like this guy. This guy's a Democrat, this guy's a Republican, this guy's, you know, a religion that I'm not gonna, yeah, and that all but plays that into it. Goes in. Yeah, you just don't like, he looks like, he looks like my uncle who was always rude to me, I don't wanna train with him, I mean, whatever, there's, you know, there's things that you, you, you go, I can work with this guy. You feel it right away. Okay, so let's just say I find a guy that I connect, we yep. get along. Yep. After that, how do I know that this guy knows what he's doing? This girl knows what she's doing. So I think you have to trust the certification process. I would couch that with just because you're certified doesn't mean you're good, and just because you're not certified doesn't mean you're not good. So to me, a certification means the person bothered learning X amount of knowledge and regurgitating it on test day. Are they always looking for new things? Not new, you know, bells and whistles kind of stuff. I'm into that because I like stuff. I think it's fun. I think it's fun to, to trick the mind, to stay engaged, to feel it slightly differently on a shoulder press that's here versus here versus here. But that's my thing. You don't need all that. You could do this if you're a qualified trainer with, you know, two cinder blocks and a broomstick. But if I'm not in LA, then, you know, I gotta find a way to uh, go look for someone. Back in the days, Magazines. I used to look at all the uh, health and fitness magazines. Same. You got Muscle and Fitness. I think you you Same. wrote it for like ten years. Ooh, men yeah, men more, more, yeah. More, yeah, ten years. You got Flex. You got uh, Muscle Magazine. Development. There was a magazine that was my favorite one by Bill Phillips. It was called Muscle Media 2000. Yeah, I, I know. know if you remember sure, that. sure, of course. There was something about Muscle Media that was scientific and formula and all this stuff that they would give. What source do you trust today? I'll to? read everything from. Um, T Nation, bodybuilding.com, muscular development, muscle and fitness flex, and then go the other route. Shape, muscle and fitness, hers, um, allure, any of those, they're gonna be, there's gonna be a fitness tip or a health tip, and if I can find a way to bring that in and weave it into a way to communicate what I wanna get to my people, then I'll use it. It's a business of poaching, right? I'll take from powerlifting, I'll take from distance running, I'll take from yoga, I'll, I'll take from Pilates, I'll take from what it, from bodybuilding. A, there are a million sources. At some point you have enough knowledge, enough empirical data that you are able to distill it down to what actually you know works. So you're still not leaning towards one source. Like for instance, in the business world, uh, somebody may ask me, magazine, entrepreneur, 
you know, Fortune, Forbes, Wall Street, I may say I'll lean towards Forbes first and I'll lean this. You're not saying anybody that's the leading indicator today. I'm not saying the leader's not out there. I'm sure they are. I'm saying I treat them all as whatever I see, I read. See what makes sense and sure. what's changing Sure. Also today. social media. I mean, you can't deny what you see it comes across on Instagram. There's a, There are so many... You're a constant student. You're a constant student. Constant, yeah. Wow. Uh, but I'm also so weirdly into it and passionate about it and I look at it and, and I'll send it to the guy I train with Brad Siskin and I'll say hey we should try this tomorrow or let's look at this I'll send it to Kaylee who works for me and I'll say let's pick up one of those pieces of equipment you, you think that's one of the reasons because you said uh, 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 I've been able to outlast these guys you know I've been around and I've done this and I've done that you think a big part of it is maybe the fact that obviously the work ethic is in place but because you're constantly wanting to learn everything. the minute you think you, you've got it it's unlocked we're not this is this is an evolving field and it's constantly evolving and as we learn more about what the body responds to and and um, stressors that affect you know you may be doing something outside of you may be doing something at work that is so detrimental to your health that it's negating X percent of what your body is doing in the gym it could be your feeding whether it's your food it's your quantity your quality or your timing of your food right a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie if you're on a 2500 calorie diet a day for example and you eat 2,500 calories at 6 a.m., nothing till the next 6 a.m., that's gonna affect you differently than if you go 500, 500, 500, or if you go all day, nothing, yep. 25 before sleep. So playing with it, you have to be open to that, and you're gonna read different studies. Some of them are crazy, and you go, come on, dude, no way. There's some very weird ones out there. <laughs> I mean, I can't even, I said, yeah. I'm like, this guy says he swears by this, I don't eat till six o'clock at night. What I do is, I try that. I'll try it for two days three days, four days, whatever it is. See how it does. I'll try the master cleanse. You know, okay, I'll give it a shot. Cayenne pepper, grade B agave honey, whatever it was, and, and lemon juice, and I'm trying that. <laughs> After like two days, I'm going, oh my God, <laughs> hard to focus. But that's just my experience yeah. with it. So I'll have somebody come in and say, have you ever tried that? And I'll say, I did, and here's what I got out of it. But again, focus group of one, I'm one dude, I did it for two days. I, I, I burn, I, you know, I run this hot during a day from this time in the morning to this time of night. Didn't give me enough energy. Just couldn't do it. Yeah. Have you tried a ketogenic diet? Sure have. Did I like it? It was interesting. I don't think it's for everybody. Do I think it's effective in dropping weight before, uh, you know, fill in the blank goal, whether it's prom or class reunion or beach vacation? Yeah, you could make it work. How true are you going to be to it? Someone sees you and says, Man, I would love to have the Kardashians as an account. It, the, the biggest following family social media in the world. Some America has less people living here than that entire family combined on following on Instagram, right? Okay, how do I go to the point where one day I have all these successful people that want to be trained by you? So how do I get these people that want me to be their uh, uh, you know, realtor, agent, whoever maybe? How do I get to that point? You have to know who you are. Who are you? Are you, are you fast talking, flip, vulgar? Or are you straight down the middle, not racy with your language, um, stick to the facts, just the facts, that guy? I mean, who are you? And who does that appeal to? So I saw so this conversation I had with a trainer yesterday and he was saying a similar thing, right? But he wasn't real estate, he was a trainer. And he said, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to... I said, what demographic are you trying to train? Because he had something, uh, a program that had something sexy in it, and I said, what's the demographic? He said, oh, I just want to get all the, all the, like the cool Hollywood people. I said, I, I think, to me, I think that word is a red flag. I think anything with sexy abs, sexy glutes, sexy looks, sexy body, it, um, I think it's objectifying. I think it's, um, it's not something that people take seriously because it's sort of intent. What, what's sexy? What's sexy to you may not be sexy to me. And I don't know, some people may not even feel like they're sexy or will ever be or even have permission to be sexy. So that's not what they're really going for. I think you're, I think you're narrowing that down. So I wouldn't use that word. And if, and if you're not particularly sexy, I certainly wouldn't use that word. So you gotta know who you are and who you're targeting. Are you targeting, do you think the guys, do you think the businessmen in Beverly Hills are gonna go work out and do this hardcore athletic workout, if I call it sexy athlete workout? I don't think so. I think that turns people off right out of the gate. So you have to know 
who you are, who you're speaking to, how you're approaching them. Is your, are you e-blast guy or are you text guy? I do all my own texting and scheduling with everybody. I do it with the head coach and the athletic trainer at the Lakers. I do it here with every single celebrity, every single athlete. I text them myself because I'm that guy. Was, it, was there ever a breakthrough when you got into this market? Like, did you have a breakthrough moment? Because you're saying you were going to people's homes, right? I'm mm -hmm. going to their homes, I'm doing the training. Then you worked out of a gym for eight years. Mm -hmm. And then nine years, you had a, a different gym. Yeah. You had 11 years that you've been here, right? Yeah. So was there a, you know, your In terms of the client, people I'm training? Your first client wasn't a no, successful, I see what you mean. how uh, did you get into that market? Yeah, my first clients were all, I mean, people who definitely had disposable income to pay a trainer, for sure. I mean, it, it, there are not a lot of people who are strapped for money that are reaching out to a trainer. I would think, you know, they're, if, if they're really strapped, they're looking at more basic um, costs than a trainer. So the people that are looking for that already have the, the disposable income for it, right? And then you get the people who want to spend whatever it takes because they want to speed up the process. And as a trainer, you can't speed the process in terms of what the body is doing, especially if they're not doing the right things outside. You know, if you're in the gym with me three, four, five, six days a week, that's three, four, five, six hours a week. That leaves you uh, at the least uh, 162 hours on your own. What'd you do with that? Did you make the right choices with food? Did you make the right choices with recovery? Did you make the right choices um, with hydration? Did you try to reduce the stressors that are causing your body to, to go into that state where you know everything's breaking down? That's just hard to do, you know? You gotta be doing that outside of here. Got it. And so, okay, so then the next question for you. Obviously, you're not, I don't, uh, I don't assume your rate is gonna be the same as a rate as, at a person at 24 hour fitness, at a person at Equinox. I mean, if I'm, tr if I'm wanting to come to you, I, your nut here is a high nut, unless a propeller or somebody sponsoring the nut for you. No. So if that's the case and your number's gonna increase. You have to create ancillary revenue streams. Okay. For so, me. That's for great. me. But that's also why I can't pitch what I do to trainers around the world. Hey, start a gym like this in this part of town and do this, and don't worry if you go broke. I can't, that's not a great pitch, right? So if you're trying to do it this way here, and, and really I could do this here if I had four more trainers who worked my hours. Here? Yeah, right here. Okay. I could make that work. But I keep it with two of us because I, I want their experience I want this to be a safe environment. I want this to be where the person doesn't feel like they're, you know, somebody's in the corner taking a cell phone picture of them. Nobody needs that. So this is not a membership deal at all. There is no membership. Deal. No, there's no I membership. There, there is no, no membership. It's, I'm this with somebody gym. and my other trainer That's is with somebody. It. That's it. There are never more than four wow. people. Upstairs, we're 5,000 square feet. There are never more than four people here ever. That is an amazing system and a model. But okay. So what you do is you, so, the way it worked out was uh, I create an ancillary revenue stream or ancillary revenue streams, right? So you do that with things online, with corporate alliances, with, um, uh, you know, we're supposed to be getting into merchandising sales. I'm leaving that to my wife. That's not my, you don't want to see what I'd pick. Uh, so those are ways to, to offset it. So then the lesson there would be, if I'm watching this, is while I'm doing this, I gotta find ancillary ways to. If you wanna do it like this. If you wanna do it with this model. Yeah, if you wanna do this model in this location. Like I'm very, you know, geo specific. Uh, this is 90210, right? You could do this model in another city. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe, but you could definitely do it in another city where your overhead is a little bit less. Add two trainers, drop my overhead by 20% which is what you would get real estate market in another place. No doubt. And it would yeah. work. Yeah. So you could, you could essentially take this as a... You can't just, char you can't just gouge the client and the charge them more. You'll lose them. If the, client, if the client is paying you what they're paying their legal team, they're not, they're not, they're not to gonna me. stay with it you. It happened to me, and the guy did it to me, and then I went and asked the guy that referred to me, he says, well, they found out, he Googled you how much money I would your net worth this, he doubled you. Came over. And so, so I Came called over. the guy out, I said, why are you charging me? He says, what do you mean? I said, that guy's paying this much. Why are you asking me for this much? We talked about that earlier. He lost me instantly, by the way. So you're right. Not only that, but I'm sure if anybody, wherever that is, said to you, hey, I've got this trainer. I'm going to this. And you go, ooh, pump Stay the brakes. Away. No, right? Yeah. So he, so he, you know, he burned that 
That's that's scorched earth now. 100%. Okay. So my takeaway from you is... I'm always going to be straightforward. I'm always going to be fair about it. I'm always going to be forthright. I'm always going to text you directly. And we're going to work when you're here. Now, we may... Oh, you said we're allowed... We may fuck around mm -hmm. during the workout, but you're working out. We may goof. We may joke. There may be, you know, whatever banter there is, but you're working out. Gunner, in the family you grew up in, everybody went to do. Yeah. Not everybody, but most people went to do. Mother, father, brother, I all went to do. <laughs> everybody went to That's do. That's how we do it. So what was the standard of expectation from parents? Was it a high expectation type of family? Yeah. Was it a competitive environment or, or not? Uh, my mother and my brother are freakishly competitive. And it's, and it's funny. I don't care. And people say, well, if, if you don't, show me a good loser and I'll show you a real loser. I'm a good loser. I don't think I'm a loser. I don't, if we play ping pong and you win, I don't care. I'm competitive against me. Okay. Being your prior best, constantly, what can I do to get Always. better? It's that, it's that... Uh, by the way, long term, that wins. Let's hope. It's that quote about oh. golf, right? Yeah, I'm not competing against the other golfers. I'm competing against the course yeah. and my prior best score. That's right. So that's how I am with this. I'm not competing against another trainer. I'm, the guys that are out there, by the way, there's 17 million people in the LA area. Mm -hmm. There's enough people for every trainer. I know you, you guys all want to become trainers. There's enough people. There, are, really there are enough you. people for you. The key is, can I do right with the people I'm working with? Can I give them 100% in my workout every single time? And I can tell you, that's when I stop seeing 13, 14 people a day. And I pulled it back to 10, 11, 12, because I couldn't deliver at the level that I wanted to. I didn't have anybody complain. What's your schedule like on a daily basis? Like, what time do you start? I get up at 3.45, I'm here at 4.30. I do my own workout till six, clean up, uh, start people 6.30, 7.30. 637 and finish and get out. Are typical sessions one hour? Yeah. Okay. I have some I have a guy who's on a, has a number of TV shows and sometimes I see him 435, 530 and you, then you I you'll work out to him. Yeah. Got it. And then I find a way to jam mine in somewhere. So let me ask you, would you be open if I come back to LA and we find a time that's good for both of us and we do a routine. I am motivated, so you're not getting somebody that's not self motivated. And we do a routine and we record that routine and we show it to them what one workout's gonna look like with. Okay, the answer is yes, but in terms of showing them what it's gonna look like, you're not gonna show them what it's gonna look like because you're gonna show them what that workout is. Remember, I write a different workout for every person every day because uh, just on a physiological level, you're changing. You're changing right now, right? Mm -hmm. the, the you right now is gonna be different if you get eight hours sleep or if you get three hours sleep in what you'll look like at eight tomorrow morning, right? So, they may see, they'll see that workout, I'm fine with that. But if they came back and saw the next workout, it'd be a totally different workout. I don't repeat the movements so, that much. So we need a long-term commitment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, workout routine is what we need. There we go. It's a long-term commitment. Well, there's a reason why you are who you are. Uh, Lakers, we've had Magic before. We had him at our event. We had James That's my Gordon boss. Event. That's my boss. Yes. Um, how is that, by the way, representing the brand? You're excited about this whole, uh, you know, where it's yeah. headed towards and what's going How can Your clientele is going to change in 12 months. How, you know can, that, right? how can you not you be know, excited about representing that brand? people next year. We'll see. It'll be interesting. You got no max way. contracts you can give up. It should be very interesting. Yeah. I'm excited. I don't think I'm one of those. <laughs> well, it's not how I see that playing you, out. You're going to play an important role. Anyways, brother, this has been a blast. Thank uh, you. Thanks for allowing us to come to your uh, beautiful gym here with this unique equipment that you have here with Captain America. You should, do some, you should actually do some B-roll upstairs so people don't think that this, people people don't think this is the gym. This is, all, well this is the downstairs part. This is not the whole gym. I cannot believe it's only two trainers. That is so amazing to me. He's up two there right now. Here. That is so amazing to me. It's cool. Brother, thank you, thank very you much. so much. Yeah, yes. yeah.